Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the TTJ Tech Show here, coming to you today from www.ttjtech.biz. Boy, have we got a great show in store for you today. Trainer Cliff of stirritup.com. And by the way, that stir is spelled with a U, not an I, so it's S T U R I T U P.com. Trainer Cliff of Stir It Up, a great friend, a brother in Christ, um, part of the TTJ training team. Uh, joins us today as we discuss recent Apple product releases, Apple rumors, and, of course, our upcoming iPad for All Computing course. You're going to want to stay tuned for all of this, my friends. And by the way, if you're joining us from YouTube today, don't forget to do three things for me. Time recorded. I want to make sure that you like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Now, what does that mean? That means leave a like on this video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel at TTJ Tech if you've not already had a chance to do so. And then please reach out and smash that notification bell so you'll always stay in the loop with everything that we are doing. So let's go now, my friends, to the collab with Trainer Cliff from Stir It Up as we discuss all this awesome tech. Hello everybody, this is Cliff from Stir It Up. This is our Tech Talk Coast to Coast podcast. And I have my good friend, brother in Christ, buddy in teaching, Matt Valbridge from TTJ Tech. Tech. Yes, thank you so much. Great to, uh, great to be here this afternoon. I am Matt of TTJ Tech, as, uh, as Cliff already mentioned, ttjtech.biz. And you can also find me on Apple Podcasts as TTJ Tech Talk, as well as on YouTube. You can go to youtube.com forward slash at TTJ Tech. We've got the TTJ Tech show there, and we've also got The Vessel, which are our Christian uh, Bible study uh, podcasts, devotionals, and uh, family podcasts, and things of that nature. So thanks so much for having me today. You always got to one-up me, don't you? <laughs> now nah, nah, I gotta. No, I'm just <laughs> nah, I gotta tell him about all my shows. <laughs> Stir it up. I also have a couple of Christian uh, podcasts as well as on YouTube. Um, just for dis- disclosure, disclaimer, whatever you want to call it, I always put my shows up on the podcast channel now first because I'm working with a different host, which puts it everywhere. I mean, there are too many to name, but the most popular ones is, of course, Apple Podcasts, which is all of our first choice. And then, of course, you got Matt's buddies over at Spotify, and then you got uh, <laughs> Google Podcasts and Radio Public, where if you're on um, iHeartRadio and um, a couple of other ones that I can't think of the name of. But anyway, if you search for um, Preach to Teach, which is my uh, ministry uh, podcast, which I do some preaching and testimonies there. I also have my senior pastor who does some teachings once a month. Um, we call it Preach to Teach because we don't want to yell at you. We don't want to uh, holler at you. We want to teach you and make sure you can understand and break down God's word. We also have my Sports Talk Coast to Coast podcast. Again, search for it in any podcast app. It should come up. Now that we got all the plugs and semantics out the way, let's get into some Apple product reviews. All right, Matt, so you have the new iPad Pro 11th inch M2, I think it is, by Apple that they just released back in, what was it, uh, January, I guess? Uh, it was uh, somewhere around there, I think late late uh, fall, I think it was before Christmas, but yes, I, I've used all of the latest iPads, with I guess the exception being the iPad mini, but other than that, um, the the new 10th generation iPad uh, the 10.9 inch iPad Air and the 11 inch iPad Pro. I've not used the 12.9 inch, but uh, this is a. Uh, these are all fantastic iPads. Every one of the iPads in the lineup is extremely capable, extremely powerful, and uh, you know, I, I think pretty much you know for most people, any of those models would do exactly what you need. There are certain benefits to each model. Of course, if you go up to the iPad Pro, you have four speakers instead of two. 
You have uh, the M. That's the only one with the M2 processor. Although the iPad Air does have the M1. I was just about to say, is the only difference between this generation and the last one, or the last two generations that you have owned, pretty much, is pretty much the software, or not the software, but the hardware, the speed. M1 coming to M2, maybe a better display and a bit more um, organization, I guess, for stage manager stuff like that, right? So the the M2 versus the M1 is one of the big differences, yes, and I don't really even, I can't honestly say that that's even noticeable. I'm sure it is in benchmarks, and maybe in really, really high-end tasks, it might, you know, be a second or two quicker, but I mean, you know, you really don't see that, and so, I mean, M1, as you know, is is no slouch. It's a fantastic uh, processor and will be for years to come. Uh, the M2 for our Apple Pencil users has the new hover feature. So you can sort of preview your drawings in the air before you actually place the pencil on the display. And the other thing the iPad Pro has now that it's the only model to have is Wi-Fi 6E. Now, again, you're going to be limited as to how much you actually notice that, especially if you don't have a Wi-Fi 6E router. Now, as Comcast customers, we do have a Wi-Fi 6E router. Praise God. They're one of the few in the industry to actually offer that standard. Uh, but I mean, you, you know, you're not going to see that much of a, of a difference in most cases between Wi Fi 6 and Wi Fi 6. Not to downplay it because it's a great iPad. I was about to say, uh, most, but, most providers aren't going to provide 6E right now anyway. Comcast most of them is probably don't. the king of internet right. providers anyway. But I mean, I have Spectrum. I don't think they've provided, but as you know, um, I know yours are probably collecting dust unless you've sold them as of yet. But the Eero, the updated version that I have is 6E, so. Right, right. All right, let's talk about the Apple TV. Now, not much has changed about this except the fact that it's double the storage and less the cost, and it's a little smaller footprint, right? Right, smaller footprint, double the storage, which was definitely a beautiful thing. A a big processor bump. um, I think that surprised a lot of people because... I don't think anyone was really expecting to see that, of course, when it was released. But, um, you know, the overall package is really, really enticing, not because it's going to enable anything new that you couldn't really do before, but because it's going to future proof the experience for quite a while. And I mean, that's got the A15 Bionic processor, which is extremely powerful. That's what they had on the uh, I get what I still what they have on the iPhone. uh 13 and 14 models, I guess, if I'm not mistaken. I, I know the 14 Pro and Pro Max might be one above that. And the, the other thing is just the side thing. The remote now uses USB-C uh, to charge instead of light. I'm glad you grabbed the remote because there was a uh, kind of a – it wasn't announced. But, yes, they did change the remote to USB-C to USB-C or whatever yeah. you have to plug it in. I mean, you could be USB-C to USB to charge because it really doesn't take that long to charge anyway. But right. A charging cable is not provided this time. Right. Yes. Uh, And and that's uh, that's one of those things, I guess, where, you know, trying to uh, either I don't know whether that's, you know, environmental or cost cutting. That kind of surprised me, though, because I could understand if it was still USB-C to lightning. I mean, because we all have multiple USB lightning cables. But based on the fact that they the bottom part that you plug into the remote is USB-C. It kind of surprised me that they didn't provide that one based on the fact that, you know, maybe because we all have iPhones and iPads, and I guess if you have an iPad Pro, which everybody doesn't, then you already have a USB-C to USB-C charging cable. But that one kind of surprised me that they didn't yeah, provide that. All of, the, um, all of the latest iPads in the lineup, Air, you know, the standard iPad, all the way across the board now, are USB-C, but this is the first year that that's the case. So if you have an older iPad or just an iPhone or something, you have to pick up a USB-C to USB-C cable, either from Apple or, you know, your favorite third-party uh, website. But it is, um, you know, uh, that's one of the other features. I think the big thing about that, and then there's some Wi-Fi uh, upgrades and HDR, you know, for, for more video formats supported and audio formats. So it's all around a solid offering but i i do think my favorite thing about the new apple tv is the the fact that it was doubled in storage yes, across and, the board and 50 bucks cheaper and 50 that's true that's right now yep, correct absolutely. me if i'm wrong though if they get the the smaller version so it's 128 and then there's 64 
when they get the 64 right. version, they don't get the Ethernet port on the back, right? That is correct. That is absolutely correct. It, the the uh, 64 gig one is just a, called the Apple TV 4K Wi-Fi, I guess. And then the uh, 128 is Wi-Fi plus Ethernet. Uh, so if you do hardwire, and, and again, that, you know, <laughs> When's the we last don't... time you hardwired yours? Because I haven't done it since maybe 2015. Yeah, it, it's not. It's typically not necessary. I've definitely. never had any hiccups or people that you, no. you need to be hardwired to get the greatest speeds. No, not with an Apple product. You don't. <laughs> well, no, no. And as, as, especially if you have good Internet. I mean, if you're running on a slow connection, you know, like what would you under consider slow? Well, that's that's exactly what. Yeah, that's all relative. Um, I mean, cause I, I my guess slow I, would be like maybe 30 or 40 megabits but i mean yeah. most providers don't even let you start they start out with a, a buck 50 or more so well yeah cable providers especially uh you know some of the other ones you you can still see some of those slower speeds and, and that would be the thing if you're down under 100 especially down to like you said 20 30 40 megabits per second and it also depends on how many devices to. you have connected to because you and i it absolutely I mean, does we're 40 plus i mean 100 oh, yeah. gigabyte 100 megabytes is not about to help us <laughs> <laughs> I think I last count I I because I, you can see that in the you know in the Wi-Fi apps that you right. use of course and I think at last count I was at fifty six or fifty seven devices now granted a lot of those are sitting idle most of the time because they're smart home devices or printers and stuff doorbells you know? but, cameras right, that right, only activate right. with motion and stuff like that exactly. Let's go on to something. I have the Apple TV too. I don't or the the new Apple TV as well. There's nothing I need to add except the fact that I like, you know, maybe some people don't know this when you have a smart doorbell connected to your network in your home app, all that must be um uh, synchronized correctly. But if somebody comes to your door and you're watching a movie or you're on your Apple TV, it it automatically switches to that camera and shows you who's at the door. That's exactly right. I love that feature. I can't see, but it, it, it just, for security reasons, it's just, you know, the world today is not safe in certain areas and certain things. And I mean, I'm not even going to say certain areas. It could be all areas, just depending on the person and what they have up their sleeve. But that's another topic for another day. Let's move on to a, one of our favorite devices, and that's the HomePod, the updated 2023 HomePod. Uh, we used to call it the big brother. Now I guess we can call it the new brother or the updated brother or whatever. <laughs> but... <laughs> We both have a, I have a pair, and I'm on in the in the, in the um, process of ordering another pair. Do you only have one pair, or did you get two? I have one pair as of right now. Okay. I I plan to probably get another one. I was uh, I I originally got these home pods for our basement because we've redone that. We got you know a lot of stuff down there: mini fridge, big TVs, pool table, you know, all these sorts of things. Right. I even and, mounted uh, my the seventy five inch TV for right before the Super Bowl party this year too. So. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, that was sort of where you know. And, it's great and, being a homeowner. You don't have to ask for permission to do things. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Great and God. so. I had originally gotten that for I got this pair for our basement, but when I started listening to them, they were too good, and we spend most of our time upstairs in the living room. We got a split level home, so I moved them upstairs, and I said we'll deal with the basement later. Um, next time we're ready to have something down there, I'll probably you know pick up a another pair. They are um, first of all getting a pair is not required but honestly it's it's the only way to go if you want really the best experience i mean um, i'd rather pay six hundred dollars or you know 550 because i work for target and 10 percent discount but anyway <laughs> right i'd rather pay right. 550 for, for a pair than pay 2000 for a sonus or a sony high-end well um, that that's soundbar. what i was just gonna say exactly anybody who is not just trying to uh, you know, because of course there's some people that just whatever Apple releases, they choose not to like it for whatever reason. Anybody who's not doing that will admit that these home pods, even two of them together, are priced right at the same point as uh other high end speakers and a lot lower than the price of some high end speakers. You right. know, like you just mentioned. The only thing that I wish is that you could pair more than more than two. So, like, to make a surround sound system. Who knows? Maybe that'll be in the future. But I wish you could have, because I, you know, I'm I'm a sound buff. Like, when I'm watching a movie, I, I like to hear the the booms and the thumps and the, oh, and the yeah. waters and the oceans and all that good stuff. So, my, my ultimate setup would be to put one in each corner of the room. So, I have four or five, maybe even six of them. But, I mean, ultimately, you could. 
you just have to unpair them and select them all. That could be, get a bit tedious, but yeah, you know. you'd have to do it through AirPlay too. That's right. <clears throat> but right. all in all, the 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 stereo sound or the the pair that you put on your Apple TV and that you can also make your default audio source is great sound. On top of it that, is. you can hook it into your other sound source, like if you have a gaming system or a DVD player, which, I mean, I don't know who even owns one anymore, but <laughs> you could hook your um, HomePod pair into your ARC audio return channel, and it will play those sources that are connected to your TV through those speakers. That's I right. have used my Xbox on that, you know, kids playing, you know, fighting games and other role-playing games. I have a football game that I play every now and again called Madden. I'm pretty sure people know who, what that is. But, it, I mean, the sound coming out of them home pods is phenomenal. It is. It is. And, and it truly is the best speaker in the house, both for music and for you know, the TV and, and, and as Cliff said, you can make it the standard default audio source for your Apple TV. Uh, it has the spatial audio, uh, as well as the, uh, what is that? The, um, I guess it does the lossless, uh, audio too. So it's got all of these latest features that Apple music supports. And, uh, it just, you know, or, or when you're listening to a show that's done in, Dolby Atmos, you know, you can have a, like if there's, a, for example, uh, you know, a, a a a jet plane or a rocket or something flying across the, it'll it'll actually move. The sound will move from one side I was of the about room to, to the other. That. I, too. I I know maybe it did it when I actually did have a 5.1 rear speaker subwoofer surround sound hooked up, but Apple amplifies that so much. Like I was listening to. A movie where there was a car driving and it literally zoomed from one speaker to the other so i mean right and it's more distinct so i mean don't think that this is just a home pod that they took off the shelf smacked the label 2023 on it and it's working there's more updated stuff like i read the description you you get you're you're getting less tweeters but more more micro or no less microphones i guess and more tweeters or something like that and it can detect whether it's by a wall or on a shelf or in the middle of the room, so it knows how to distribute the audio a little bit better. So don't think you're just getting a twenty nine or twenty seventeen HomePod with the twenty twenty three name on it. No, this is That's updated right. software and hardware. It's faster, faster process. And the other thing that it has, which is really interesting, uh, and I, I'm not a hundred percent sure which other smart speakers do this. Maybe some of the higher end Echoes, or maybe even now the Echo Dot. I don't know. But um, there is a temperature and humidity sensor built into the home pods. Yes, it is. So because when I ask, because ask... when I ask Siri what the temperature yep. is in my home, she'll yep. it, well, I have a uh, the UK voice. He'll say from um, from sixty eight degrees to seventy five average. Right, right, right. Because they'll they'll tell you all those rooms combined that you know every room that has a home pod has now has a temperature and humidity sensor, so it not only reports the temperature, but it can be used in scenes and automations and stuff too. Yes, yes. I mean, the, the home pod, you know, whether you have the big brother, the updated version, or the minis that released a, a year and a half or so ago, you're going to get the best audio experience. Now, the the minis, they. They're, I think they're designed for bedrooms, personally. Or maybe even a kitchen area. Yeah, exactly. A kitchen, a bedroom, that's right. But right. they're not going to give you this. You could put four HomePod minis together, and it's not even going to come close to the sound of one Big Brother, for lack of a better term. Um, And I love Apple. I love the fact that they tried to get into the affordable market, but I know, I know for a fact that a reason that they brought back to the Big Brother is because so many people missed it and wanted it in high demand. So they put some updates in it, released it again, and now everybody goes home happy. Well, you know, sometimes what happens is, and again, you know, you go back to Apple releases something and some people criticize it. Look, I'm not trying to be, you know, whatever. Okay, I get it. But, you know, it, it does happen. And that's exactly what happened with the first generation HomePod because people didn't understand that it was designed first and foremost to be a speaker. I was the about to say, home... remember, I got rid of my first one because I, I sold it to you because I I didn't have Apple Music at the time. Right. And I just felt right. it wasn't, you know, I was paying too much for not enough. To, I wasn't using it enough. So I didn't want right. it to collect dust and stuff like that. But, right. you know, when I signed up for Apple One and, you know, the, the it's all history now. Now I have HomePods in pretty much every room in my house. So Well, I mean, exactly. 
and the feature set has improved since then too. You know, yes, it has. I think people's biggest pushback in it when it first was released was the price point, and like you said, because they didn't know what it could and can do. Now, correct me if right. I'm wrong, but you can connect third-party music services to the um, to the HomePod, right? Yes, you can. Uh, Pandora supports it. I think. Um, I think that Amazon Music supports it, if I'm not mistaken. And there may even be another one. Uh, I, and I know it also has like, um, you know, tune in radio support and iHeart radio support. And then, of course, you can play anything through AirPlay, too. So any anything that will play on your phone or iPad or Apple TV will play on your home pods uh, as well. So there's, you know, a couple of different ways to do that. And that brings me to another point, too. You know, you mentioned about how awesome the home pods are, which they are. And I think, you know, the best thing about all of it, Apple, I believe personally, in my opinion, is better than anybody at the integration of the hardware, software and services and and the continuity between their devices. You know, look, I love I I do like, um, uh, you know, some other I mean, we we as I mentioned earlier with Internet, we are Comcast customers. So we do have uh, Xfinity TV and stuff and they make a great system. But there's nothing like when you are watching the Apple TV and you pick up your phone and it shows right up on your phone what you're watching and you make a FaceTime call while you're watching TV and it says you want to share this with the person that you're, you know, or you can control it with your Apple Watch uh, and you can control the HomePod. With the, I mean, it just it, it's a level of of integration between devices that is truly unmatched by any other platform. Completely agree, especially when it comes to, you know, not even the home pods and your Apple TV. I mean, let's just jump over to your Apple, your your iPhone and your iPad and your Mac being all signed to the same Apple ID, being able to hand off phone calls, FaceTime calls, um, email. I mean, all that. I mean, I mean, if yes. y'all can't tell, we love Apple and right. I mean, you might be person that doesn't. And maybe you didn't know some of this stuff, but Apple. I mean, they're not paying us to do this, to say none right. of this. This is just from our experience because I've been using Apple products since probably 2010. Matt goes back a little bit further than that, maybe 08, 09. Right. But the bottom line is the accessibility is built in. We're both totally blind, both been blind since we were three. And Apple has gave us, um, you know, freedom to do things on our own without having to ask a family member can you read this text to me can you tell me what this this mail says i can pick up my iphone right now go to the mailbox and do um what's that scan text thing what's it called yeah the live text the live, live text yeah. and point my yep. phone at it and i can read my mail by myself i mean it's yeah. just unreal how much apple it built accessibility now other companies have are trying they're catching up but personally in my opinion they'll never get there I mean, they can they can tout it, but I I don't think that their commitment is as big as Apple's. And Apple has all this stuff built in. We don't have to buy an extra screen reader with our Mac. We don't have to go get talk back from Google to make our iPhone work. We don't have to ask somebody to read us a time off our watch, even though there are Braille watches that are high end and do certain things. But I like many mouse on my phone person or on my phone, right. my watch <laughs> personally. So I bought. I, I'm I'm telling you, I bought the Apple Watch specifically to get Minnie Mouse. I didn't buy it for no other reason. Now, the the other features are great. <laughs> I like being able to ask Siri stuff and get the weather and all that, but Minnie Mouse, I, I love Minnie Mouse, so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, I, um, we've done the iPads, the Apple TV, the HomePods, um, I think that's pretty much it. Let's talk about, uh, let's talk about some rumors or, you know, for lack of a better term, things Apple, or people think Apple are about to announce here in the spring. I heard right. that a low end, because the high end one isn't ready, but a low end virtual reality headset is coming sometime at WWDC this um, summer. Right. I, yeah, I've been hearing all kinds of different rumors about that. And that the latest one that I've heard is that the announcement will be in uh, in June at the at the Worldwide Developers Conference. Like you said, uh, this is a, you know, a, a very interesting and I don't know. I mean, if anybody can do it, Apple can do it. But I, I don't know how or if the the community of visually impaired users is is going to um, make use of this, because, of course, a lot of that is visual. So, I you know, I guess we'll wait and see. Uh, but it looks to be, you know, and, and, and my kids have a, um, 
a virtual reality headset. They have the uh, what used to be called Oculus Quest. Now you have to call it MetaQuest, I guess, because Facebook company parent company was named Meta, whatever. Um, and you know they they really enjoy it. I mean, it's you know it's mostly gaming and so forth, and but they have a lot of fun with it. My daughter, well, both my kids really were playing with it just this week, you know, and just yesterday even. Um, whereas the Apple one, I think what, what, according to the rumors now, again, none of this has been confirmed by Apple at this point, but according to the rumors, it will be heavy on gaming, but it will also be like, you'll be able to type in the air to, to send messages. You'll be able to use it for FaceTime calls. You'll be able to watch movies and shows. Again, these are all rumors, you know? Um, and the other difference too, between this is supposedly one of the, the like mixed reality headsets, like you'd be able to go back and forth between, uh, I guess VR and AR, and I don't know what exactly. So a lot of this is up in the air. Price point is up in the air because initially it was being stated by the pundits that the Apple headset was going to be akin to some of the other really high end pro VR headsets, which you know can range from two to three thousand dollars or more. Now that they're talking about a low end one, I don't know where that fits into things. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, yeah. I, I was hearing somewhere in the neighborhood of three thousand dollars. It's something that doesn't interest me very much personally, but I mean, who am I? <laughs> <laughs> this might be something that jumps off with the other community that likes to spend, you know, some people just like to spend money, period, because they don't have nothing else better to do. But, you know, we'll see. I forgot to mention, too, about the Apple TV, too. The one thing I do like, and I never used it up until about three or four months ago, where you know the headache that some of these apps make you jump through to turn on audio description. But if you go into your settings and have audio description come on automatically, it doesn't matter what app it is. Apple TV+, Plus, HBO Max, Showtime, Paramount, anywhere. If, if the show has audio description, it's automatically going to start when you start listening or playing that or watching that show. So that's a great feature. Well, that is a great feature. And, and Apple is really, really good at that kind of stuff. I mean, it's just like single sign-on where your TV apps, you know, if you watch um, Lifetime or Food Network or something through their own app, you know, you don't have to do necessarily three different steps to sign in with your provider or something. You can store that information right on the Apple TV and it automatically signs in for you. Uh, you know, the, the, the TV app itself, I, I still say that the Apple TV app is my favorite feature of the Apple TV. I mean, not even so much because of Apple TV Plus. I mean, there's some good content on there, but a lot of it is also what I consider to be not appropriate for families and Christians and so forth. So, you know, whatever. But what I love is the the up next section. I, I start watching something and it just shows up there. And, uh, you know, I can search for something in the TV app and it shows me across all of the different services that I have, uh, you know, what I can watch. So, I mean, it, they, they've just done such a fantastic job of, um, they know how to do interface. Let's put it that way. They, they're really good at doing UI. Yes, they have. Yes, they have. Well, I think it's about that time. iPad for all computing. The crown jewel of TTJTech.biz, along with Stir It Up alongside teaching it. We're going on our fifth year, right? Or is this yes. year number six? Absolutely. This is, uh, this is year number six. We started in 2018. So, yeah, this is year That's number right. six. Season That's six of right. iPad for all computing. It started out as, what did, we, what did you call it at first? It was uh, it was originally replacing your computer with an iPad. That was the initial uh, title of the course, and we decided that there are it, you know while it's certainly possible to do that, and I've done that. Um, we decided you know there may be some people who are not interested in doing that or not ready to do that, but they could still benefit because there's so much that can be done with these iPads, really all your computing needs. So that's where that term came from, iPad for all computing, which is what we've called it ever since then. Now, when we initially started this course back in April of 2018, you touted that there was probably only three things that you couldn't do with your iPad. What's that, what's that number down to now? 
Honestly, for most people, just depending on your needs, for most people, that's down to zero. There, there's there's one or two, there, there's probably one, one thing stands out in, in particular, and it's sort of a niche thing. But, you know, if you have uh, if you have music on CDs or something and you want to try to bring them into your actual music library, that still really can only be done by putting a, a traditional, you know, Mac or PC in the middle there to sync that music over. Uh, but you know, with, with people having Apple music and so forth, it, it, that has become less and less, uh, an issue anyway. Uh, one of the things back in, in 2018 that you could not do, um, with the iPad was, uh, was submit books to Apple directly for, for sale on Apple books. And you could not submit apps for sale on the app store. Both can now be done from the iPad, though the app part is developing apps on an iPad is not as robust yet as it is on the Mac, but I truly believe that will come with time because often Apple will introduce something with, you know, what they view as the most essential features and, and then they'll build out on that as, as they get requests for it and as they continue to refine it. So I expect we'll see that with uh, Swift playgrounds, which is how you develop apps on the, um, on the iPad. And of course the third thing back in 2018 was, managing like servers and and um you know remote desktop or doing um managing your external drives and all that kind of stuff and i mean you probably do more of that stuff than i do but that's uh that's not an issue anymore on ipad i really don't i mean managing a, a server it really most of the work is the initial setup as you right. know, you know, you plug it in, you make sure you right. can access it from all your devices, and you're pretty much right. done with it, unless you want to move something around, or you right. work for Paramount or Sony, and you're moving them around movie clips or something, but right. other than that, I mean, it's one of those set it and forget it things, so. Right. I'm a little, I'm not going to say confused, but I'm wondering what Apple's direction is now, though, because as you know, if you're if you've taken our more with the Mac class and you can find that on any podcast uh, platform just search for the words more with the Mac it's definitely an Apple podcast but with the update to Von Ventura the system preferences has been replaced with system settings and it looks just like your iOS and your iPad and iPhone settings correct yes yes well you know it, it's funny that you would bring that up because if you and and if you read the articles and the stories of the history of this and so forth when steve jobs conceived the ipad in his mind and and decided that apple was going to you know create that device he envisioned it being something extremely simple and yet very powerful but he deliberately did not want Certain. I mean, now this is what people say. Obviously, I never talked to the guy, so this could be, you know, things that sort of uh, spin from one thing to another too. But you know, the the what the the accepted wisdom is that he deliberately did not want certain features in the iPad, which includes multitasking. By the way, like he wanted multitasking in the sense that, you know, if you were playing music, you could also be in maps or something like that. But this idea of like using multiple apps on the same screen and stuff, he did not want that. So the so the story goes, he wanted it to be you open an app when you're done with the app, you press the home button. You know, he wanted something that you could use whether you were two years old or 92. And he wanted all of that other stuff, the file system, all of that stuff to be completely obscured from the user to keep things very simple. But what's happened since that time is that as people have been wanting to do more and more stuff on their iPad, the public has started demanding some of these things. Like, you know, okay, when I initially got an iPad, you couldn't, um, you know, you couldn't just save files anywhere you wanted to. You could not unzip or, or download files from the internet. Well, people do enough of this stuff on their iPad, they're going to want the ability to be able to do that. And then, of course, multitasking, you know, with, with multiple apps on the same screen and drag and drop, it becomes sort of an obvious thing that if you're really going to use this iPad for full-time computing, you're going to need at least some of that. So Apple has been tasked with something very challenging, I think, which is that they've got to maintain the simplicity and the ease of use of an iPad while adding that power and functionality. Now, in my opinion, so far, they've been able to do it. You know, I, I still find the iPad just as easy to use as I always have, but they've added so much power and capability and functionality. So 
you know, hopefully that's the track that that continues. I don't know where the the Mac fits into all that or where the iPad fits into the Mac. But, you know, if you talk to um, if you listen to some of the interviews with the Apple executives, they they make it very clear that, you know, it's never been their intention for a person to have to make a choice between, you know, like the, the whole premise that that we always talk about, that it's possible to replace your traditional computer with an iPad. Apple Apple wants you to be very careful when you stay when you say stuff like that because they don't want uh their users to feel like they have to make that choice. You know, if you want to have uh two iPads and a Mac or two Macs or you know whatever, you you do that for the purpose that it benefits you. So Apple's been very clear that that they've never intended for one to cannibalize or replace the other. Uh they they want their users to have, you know, the choice and the decision and and the other thing too is we don't know you know for for many many years every time apple would be asked if there would ever be a touchscreen mac they outright said no that there there's there's no chance there's going to be a touchscreen mac it's not in the but plan. i've seen a rumor that they, they, they i've seen a rumor that somebody was looking at it that, that exactly they, that they're thinking about it they they've become closer to the vest on that answer and their more recent answers have been have been playing it coy. They they're not being quite as definitively against it. So, you know, you never know what we might see in the next few years. Right. Well, I, I love both I love all Apple products. I mean right. probably not one that I haven't touched or owned except for the Mac Pro, which I will never I will never have a use for that. I mean, yeah. I'd never say never, but hey, maybe Stereo mm-hmm. Up Studio will become a video p- production company. I don't know. Right, Who knows? Right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, if I'm in my office, my Mac is my choice. But if I'm on the move, in the car, at the kitchen table, the iPad is where it's at. I mean, it's it's, it's my mobile computing um solution. Um, right. You can get a MacBook Pro, you know. Fully loaded for about eighteen, nineteen hundred dollars, maybe even less if you just go with a MacBook Air. But you know, it, it gets a little spendy though when you want to max everything out with the iPad Pro. So say you go with the twelve point nine two terabytes and the Magic Keyboard that I hate so much and Matt loves so much that costs three hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> You're probably getting in the neighborhood of a fully maxed out 2023 M2 MacBook MacBook Pro with the Max um, uh, chip because you come you're coming in probably just under twenty five hundred dollars, right? Two terabytes, right. twelve point nine, uh, three three hundred fifty dollar keyboard, and who knows yeah. what other accessories you might buy? Right, absolutely. So you're you're very much on par with that, and so then it really does become personal preference, which I just you know I love you. Using the interface of the iPad, I love the touch screen, what and size I do you also have with the with the new one you have. Um, so the, the, the I know you got the eleven inch, but I mean the, be, uh, right. the the uh, the storage. Uh, um, well, I have two fifty six on everything now. I you know, and and uh, that's to me plenty. I mean, you can go as you said all the way up to two terabytes, but I I like the two fifty six. Yeah, I remember uh, when we both had the twelve point nine. We both had we had the five twelve. And, right, and I didn't even come close to doing that. Now I don't even, I don't even, you know. When I, I, I I'm, I'm leaning towards the, the iPad 10th generation, 256, but it's, it's about to be March, or March, just the Wednesday, and yes, usually the iPad Air refreshes in November, so I'm probably right just gonna wait it out and get that with the M2 and roll with that for a couple of years. So right. Right, absolutely. I think that's a you know that's a wise thing. The iPad Air is a fantastic device, and um, you know the other thing you're getting with an iPad that has not been put into the the MacBooks is is well, if you choose to get it, is cellular capability. Right, uh, which I do love having in the iPad. And you know, nine times out of ten, if you are with one of the bigger companies like Spectrum or Comcast, sometimes you don't even need cellular data because you can just connect to their mobile hotspot. Yeah, I don't know how many. I forget what what um, uh, what Xfinity Comcast says they have, but it's millions of hotspots around the country. Yep. So let's go a little bit more into more detail. We've told people about what the course entails, or actually we haven't got into that part, but how it was born. But what do we do in this iPad for all computing? I mean, do we teach voiceover to blind users? Do we teach sighted people how to use stage managers? Do we teach everybody how to multitask? What what do we do in this course? 
So uh, this course is designed to really teach you iPad from the ground up, whether that's productivity. Productivity is a big part of it, uh, but also, you know, the fun and entertaining stuff, too. So we will teach multitasking. Um, I, I've not yet made a definitive decision on how involved we will get with stage manager since the vast majority of our users do tend to be voiceover users. Now, having said that, I want to make it very clear that the course is for everybody. And we do have, we often do have sighted users and they benefit from it and it's a blessing to them. So we're not saying you can't take it if you're sighted, but I don't know how involved we'll get with stage manager because the last time I tested stage manager, I felt like it was more visual than, you know, a, a benefit to a voiceover user. Having said that, though, I have not tested stage manager since probably version 16.1. So I will do that again before the start of the course. Uh, but other than that, we, we do teach multitasking. We do teach all of those features, the drag and drop, the split screen. And we try to teach a variety of apps not in, you know, we're not going to teach you every detail because we have paid training if you need to go further, but we do introduce you to creating a document in pages and creating a, a slideshow in Keynote and, and creating a spreadsheet in numbers. And we teach you how to make a simple movie in clips. And, you know, we do all of these things and more as far as voiceover goes. Uh, and, and of course, Cliff brought that up because we, we learned, we have learned a lot in these past five years. Uh, of course, we're always works in progress and, you know, praise God, he's growing us. We always have more, you know, further to go, but how far he's brought us already, praise God. And we have learned so much in the past five years. And one of the first things we learned was that it is not possible to teach voiceover and teach the iPad at the level we want to teach it, because you're always going to end up spending more time on one and then sacrificing the other. And so it's for that reason that we created um, our voiceover in and out course, which we've completed for this year. We'll have another one in the fall, but we do that typically every October uh, through almost Christmas time. And that course is designed to teach people how to use voiceover from the ground up if they don't know how to do voiceover gestures or don't know what the rotor is or, you know, want to go further on, on, uh, voiceover and and activities and all these things we teach that in a separate course so that the expectation is if you do need voiceover that you will have at least a basic working knowledge of uh, a reasonable working knowledge of how to use voiceover before you come into this iPad uh, class yes we have learned a lot <laughs> a yeah. lot yeah. in this class over the last six years and we've we've tried you know teaching it live we've tried the recordings and personally i think they both work better they both have their benefits when you when you play a recording you're able to get more done without a lot of repetitiveness but when you do teach live you're able to give people you know quick things to do if they have their ipad there so they can ask questions if in case they you know not catching on so it's it's there's there's benefits in, in both ways and we both do it i did it in the more with the mac class some live recordings or um some live sessions and some recordings and we did it in the past uh this last voiceover in and out course also. Right, right. So how do how do we sign up for this class? Uh so there will be um a uh an announcement about that uh, probably released right in, in uh conjunction with this this episode, and you will be able to sign up if what we need you to make sure of is that you're subscribed to our newsletters and both our websites, ttjtech.biz.biz, and also stiritup.com, which of course, remember, is with a U, not an I in the word stir. Uh, both of those websites have a subscribe button, and uh, you just simply click that button. Uh, it brings up a little popover asking you to enter your email address. If you're a voiceover user, be sure you don't try to jump around because it's not actually going to load a separate page. A lot of our voiceover users expect that when they click subscribe, it's going to take them to a new page and that's not what happens. And then they'll realize, Oh, the page is the same. So it didn't, they'll think it didn't do anything, but it's it, at the very bottom, it brings up like a modal or a, a popover of some sort. And uh, we did a demo of that on YouTube. If you need to listen to that with voiceover, but it brings it up at the bottom, just asks you to enter your email address to subscribe 
and you do that. And again, then at the bottom, it says, you know, success, you've been signed up, whatever. It doesn't send you a welcome confirmation email or anything like that. Not a lot of fanfare, just very simple. But then you are subscribed to our newsletters. And also, uh, we'll be putting this on other newsletters if you're on different email lists like only Apple Talk and Support, which we run, or you know, a few others. But what, what will come is an announcement of the iPad course with a registration link. And when you click that link to register for the course, it will ask you to fill out, uh, you know, a basic form, your name, your email address. We want to make sure you do, uh, your own because we've discovered that, uh, the link that you get to join is unique for each, uh, person who registers. So just click the link to register, enter your name, name and your email address, and then you will get an email directly from Zoom because we host these in, in the Zoom platform. And so you'll get an email directly from Zoom saying here's the uh the link to join ipad for all computing 2023 and uh, that's it just hang on to that link we're going to be doing um what do we decide mondays and thursdays correct correct um, at two eastern one central 2 12 p.m eastern Mountain, yep. 11 pacific and if you're in another yep. country ask siri exactly well i mean i I mean, we've talked to people zero for almost forty-five minutes or so. so <laughs> I guess we can uh, wrap this up. But um, again, iPad for all computing starting. Um, what is it? March sixth is, is yep, it today? Yep, March one week from today. Yep, March sixth. And um, remember to subscribe to both our YouTube channels. Mine is YouTube.com. Um, what is it? Forward slash stir um, yes. coast to coast. Mine is coast to coast now because somebody else had my stir with the U. I can't believe that, but. And then, of course, we have our podcast, um, um, ttjtech.biz. Just go to his website, and you'll find all the links you need. Same with mine, stir it up, S-T-U-R-I-T-U-P.com. And you can search for any of our podcasts at Apple Podcasts or your po- your favorite podcasting platform. Say that three times. <laughs> <laughs> so for ttjtech.biz, I'm Cliff with a stirredup.com. Thanks for joining us. 